Okay. So, welcome back. So, this will be our fifth and final module for Earth Science. And in this case, I'd really like to take the time to thank everyone for staying with us for this long. First of all, because maybe you don't really have a choice in where your teachers. But I we really hope we really hope that you guys had fun on this course with uh, with myself and Mr. Alana. So for the last one, we're going to talk about geologic time. And that we are going to try to answer the following questions with a special focus on relative age. Now, how old is the Earth? At this point, I'm gonna uh, pa I'm gonna pause for a few seconds to ask you to ponder about the age of the Earth. You're right; it's older than any of our grandmas or all of our grandmas combined. So it's actually 4.6 billion years old. Wowza! Imagine how many zeros are there. Yep, a lot. Now. One formation that actually captures the whole history of the Earth is the Grand Canyons. Now, if you would look at the photo and if you could actually see it clearly, there are rock strata or rock layers. There are many rock layers there. So with that, each and every rock layer actually tells a different story and oftentimes a different time period. Because as we may know, rocks tend to take thousands, millions of years to actually form. So with that, the different rock layers found at the bottom of the Grand Canyon may have actually been here at the start of the Earth's formation or during the start of the formation of the Earth. And that uh, one particular field of study that actually tries to tell us about the age and history of the Earth is geochronology. And it tries to study strata or the rock layers that are present around us. And that the study of this strata is actually your stratigraphy. So we're trying to understand rock layers. So well, when it comes to stratigraphy, it tries to answer the question, how are sedimentary rocks formed? Now, if you will remember, rocks undergo weathering, erosion, eventually transport, deposition, and eventually they start to clump together, forming your different layers. So your Grand Canyon is actually um, this particular, th these different layers were subjected to those processes and more. Because as we may know, there's also faulting, there's also earthquakes that can actually cause changes to these rock formations. And that the order, it's possible that the order can tell us about the age of the layers. So there's a possibility that Maybe the older ones are found at the bottom, the younger ones are found at the top. So with that, we go into the prospect of relative age dating. So we try to understand here the age of objects when compared to another object, which is in this case, we're trying to compare the layers of, layers of rock with another layer of rock. It may not tell the exact age though, but at the same time, we can correlate the rock layer based on the rock type that is found there or on in the fossils found in the sedimentary layers. Now, let me ask a question first. Why is it so important to, the, to find out the actual age of objects? Why are we not satisfied with an estimate? Or why are we not satisfied with, with relative age dating? Or if we actually have other methods of dating as well that are more accurate. I'm pausing so you can answer the question. Right, because in science, we try to pursue the truth. And so with that, we want to have the most correct information that we have, such that we can pass on this truth to the next generations. And what Miriam value is that? You got it, it's the truth. So eventually, it's also important that you, as yourselves, live out your own truths, regardless of what anyone could say. So there are, these are the different stratigraphic principles that we will try to discuss for this video. Don't worry, I know they look a lot, but we're going to try to um, slow down and try to discuss it as well as I could. So let's get on with it. 
First, we have the principle of original horizontality. What the principle of horizontality will tell us is that sediments are deposited horizontally, and that's pretty much it, such that one layer will be found in a horizontal layer. <laughs> so eventually, all the different sediments are found in one layer. So this is actually what it looks like, so that, such that this layer is different from another, this layer is different from another, and then finally, this layer is different from all the other two layers that were found. Up next, we have the principle of superposition. So the principle of superposition tells us that um, different layers are deposited in a sequence and that the older layers are found at the bottom. The younger ones are found at the top. So with that, let's look at our layer here. We have sandstone, limestone, and shale. Based on the principle of superposition, shale would be the oldest. Afterwards, limestone, and finally, the, the youngest among these three layers is sandstone. Now, if ever we're going to go forwards, the second layer is the second oldest, and finally, the youngest layer would be the sandy structure right here. Easy enough, right? Yes, very good. Now, again, just to emphasize, when it comes to the principle of superposition, oldest layer at the bottom youngest layer at the top. Because this particular principle will oftentimes be used in experiments and scenarios that we will discuss all throughout this module. So it's best to understand this one. Up next, we have the principle of inclusion. So the principle of inclusion will tell us that uh, rock layers containing inclusions are much younger than the actual inclusion. So with that, we have this rock example right here. The rock in the middle is the intrusion. The rock uh, on the outside of it is oftentimes a sedimentary rock, and that yung inclusion nage is older than the rock that it is embedded onto. So again, the intrusion is always older than the rock surrounding it. Now, these are some examples, but Miss Lim, okay, why did that happen? There is also a possibility that the intrusions have already existed and that rocks have gradually started to deposit around them and eventually surround them. So that's one hypothesis for that. Now this is a short example, okay? Let's look at the basal sill and the rhyolite lava. Just this layer first. Ignore the sandstone. Ignore the topmost layer. Between the basalt sill, let's look at the basalt, basalt sill. It includes inclusions. The basalt sill will have inclusions of rhyolite and sandstone. So with that, which is older, the basalt sill or the rhyolite lava? So with that, based on the principle of inclusion, the rhyolite is older than the basalt sill. What about this one? Let's look at the sandstone right here and the basalt sill. Which is older? Based on the principle of inclusion, the sandstone, the sandstone into inclusions are older than the basalt sill. The story possibly for this one is that the basalt is actually made uh, is an example of igneous rock. So chances are these are at the, this the, the, these two layers were actually together, but eventually magma may have intruded and eventually uh, enable these inclusions to uh, happen, be made. Okay. We also have the principle of original lateral continuity. What this principle will tell you is that sediments are initially deposited laterally on all directions. So with that, regardless kung magkaroon ng erosion, regardless kung magkaroon ng erosion, these two layers are still of the same age. So this orange is the same age as this orange. This peach is the same age as this peach. This white is the same age as this white, and so on and so forth. Because originally, they, have, they were deposited in one horizontal layer. 
but because of different events surrounding the earth, chances are nagkaroon ng ganyan. So we have to follow, follow the principle of lateral continuity to determine the re- relative age of these rocks based on kung saang layer sila nagkita. So we also have the principle of biologic succession. So what the principle of biologic succession will tell us is that sedimentary rocks that contain a fossil were actually formed during the evolution and extinction of these different species. What does that mean? It means that if you see a sedimentary rock and you can't determine its age, but you find the fossil in it, chances are the age of the fossil will actually give you a clue as to how old the sedimentary rock is. That's because we have these index fossils. Now, at the same time, again, the layer where these species are found will oftentimes determine their age. In the same way, older species are found in older layers of rock, just like what you would see in this example right here. Let's look at the clams. Where do you find the clams? Which layer? There are 10 layers all in all. So you find it in 8, 9, and 10, which is on the topmost. And usually the topmost layers are usually the younger ones. What about the trilobite right here, this trilobite? Where can you find it? It's found in the bottom bottommost layers, primarily one and two. So in a way, we can actually utilize fossils to tell us the age of rocks, or rather, the relative age of rocks. We also have the principle of cross-cutting relationships. So the principle of cross-cutting relationships is a little bit more tricky. Because what we have here is that these are usually features that cr- cut across another rock. And that these features, this cross-cutting feature, is usually younger than the features that it cuts across. What does this mean? Let's look at this one. We have mudstone, sandstone, and shale. And then we have cut-ups of basalt and rhyolite. Now let's look at this one. Let's focus first on the rhyolite uh, dike, this feature right here that, cut, uh, that cuts across the mudstone and the sandstone. According to the principle of cross-cutting relationships, the rhyolite is younger than the sandstone and the mudstone because yun yung kinat across niya. Again, when we focus on this one, Rhyolite is younger than sandstone and mudstone because it cuts across it. Chances are, rhyolite is also an igneous rock. So, because it was formed from magma, possible na nagkaroon dito, nagkaroon dito ng vent and eventually, nakapasok siya dyan, kaya siya nag-form dyan. What about basalt? Let me ask you the question. Is basalt younger than shale? Is basalt younger than sandstone? Is basalt younger than mudstone? The answer to all those questions is yes. Because of the fact that according to the principle of cutting relationships, the feature that cuts across is always younger than the layers that it cuts that it cuts to. So in this case, basalt is younger than shale, sandstone, and mudstone. So remember. Lagi yung pinakabata yung nag-cross. Just like how we have younger kids. You know, we ever have younger siblings. And that oftentimes, they cut into the conversations kasi, eh, pal, sinacharot lang now. <laughs> love your younger siblings. I definitely love mine. So this is just a short exercise for the law of cross-cutting relationships, okay? So which develop first? I will let you have this for a few seconds. So while you solve this, me and my puppet will dance. Oh, baskil na ako mainit dito. <laughs> okay. 
Now, going back, so which developed first? Among all the structures, which developed first? If you answered schist, you are correct. It's actually schist. So here, we also have to follow the principle of superposition. You, all, you always have to apply all the other uh, principles that you have learned. So the youngest, the oldest one here is schist. Up next is, the one that formed next is your sandstone. After sandstone, limestone. After limestone, shale. Now after shale, which is the next formation? The next formation is your basalt dike. And then after the basalt dike, it's actually your conglomerate. So these are the actual uh, progression of things. Okay, so remember, dahil nagkat siya dito at hindi siya umabot sa conglomerate, basalt is only younger than these four layers, but not the conglomerate layer. Kasi hindi naman niya naepalan, hindi naman niya na cut across yun. So there are two prints, there are, there are many principles that you have actually observed here. First is the principle of superposition, principle of horizontality, principle of lateral continuity, and then principle of cross-cutting relationships. So relative age dating, again, they just try to tell us about the age of one object to another. So relative, there's always a comparison. Now, again, it does not tell us the exact age in that we usually correlate the strata, the age of the strata, based on the rock type and the fossil type. So again, we don't really have an exact age for relative age dating. So uh, just another fact is that it's usually dominated by your principle of original horizontality and superposition. So ito yung pinaka-importante that you should know. Older rocks at the bottom, younger rocks at the top. However, these are oftentimes complicated by unconformities. When we say unconformities, these are actually erosion events that can actually compromise yung pagkakapatong-patong ng mga bato. And syempre, pag na-compromise yung pagkakapatong-patong ng mga bato, Hindi na natin alam kung sila na una, di ba? So an unconformity is a contact between two rock units, right here. The unconformity is the deep black lines. And that they usually tell us that the upper unit is much younger than the, than the lower unit. Ang um, problema dito is that it's much younger. So chances are, may layer of rocks na nawala. Nagkaroon ng erosion event between these two. So a lot of history has already been lost. A lot of the story has actually not been told yet in that sense. And unconformities are usually buried on erosional surfaces. And that the problem with unconformities is that it means that there's a break in the geologic record. It means that may rock layer na na-erode and that has been gone. It has been, well, eroded. There are three types of unconformities that we will talk about. Angular, disconformity, and nonconformity. When it comes to angular conformity, ang nangyayari dito is that there's an uplift of the rock beds, eventually followed by a deposition of horizontal beds. So, ano yung story yan? First is deposition. And eventually, nagkaroon ng deformation or tilting. Nag-start siyang mag-tilt. Bakit siya nag-tilt? Either nagkaroon ng fault sa rock layers below it pa, or there's some sort of event that made it happen that way. Afterwards, nagkaroon ng erosion. Now, erosion, of course, can be subjected or rather can be caused by different factors. However, ang problem dito is that nagkaroon ng bagong deposition on top of the original rock layers, resulting to angular unconformity. So we say angular unconformity because hindi sila parallel sa isa't isa. More or less, there's a tilt to it. So we also have your disconformity, which is episodes of erosion or non-deposition between layers. This actually usually occurs between two sedimentary rock layers, wherein magkaiba sila. We also have non-conformity, which actually is oftentimes between sedimentary layers and volcanic rock layers, be it igneous or, or metamorphic rock. 
and that nagkakaroon ng cross-cutting by the metamorphic or the uh, volcanic rock into the sediments. So to further simplify those explanations, again, this conformity is when sedimentary rock layers form, then are eroded, and eventually new sedimentary rock layers form on top of them. Non-conformity is when non-sedimentary rocks or igneous or metamorphic rocks may form, and they also get eroded, and then eventually sedimentary rocks start to form on them. So again, these are usually categorized by erosion episodes in between rock layers. So this is the last part of the video. If you want to take a break, don't forget to pause, get some water, you know. I know it's a very long video, but remember you are in control of your pace. Hindi mo kailangan taposin yung video in one go. You can always just take pauses. I'll be adding timestamps as well, don't worry. So we go back to your index fossils. They are actually very useful, useful, useful in a field called biostratigraphy, which actually tries to correlate the units based on fossil content. So different rock units according to fossil content. Um, index fossils actually tell us about the time or the age of the rocks that are actually present, or rather. Index fossils tell us a lot about the rocks that they are embedded in. So actually, just this particular picture right here can actually show you basically, this basically follows the bio, uh, principle of biologic succession. But what index fossils do is that they can actually tell you when certain events have happened, such that when, as to why species went extinct based on the rock layers as well. So we usually utilize the index fossils to actually tell the age of your rock layers based on kung gaano katanda yung index fossils as index fossils can actually be subjected to radiometric dating. So here are more stratigraphy examples for you to work on. So uh, we're going to try to understand the formation sequence. So ano ang nauna? Letter E, and then followed by D, and then C. Then what comes next? Letter B, karon ng cross cutting episode by B. Then there is also some erosion because hindi siya single layer lang. And then up next, there is deposition by E, by your rock layer A. So how about this one? Between 1, 2, 3, and uh, 4, what are the order of the events? Formation first of 1 after certain geological events. Deposition by 2, but here, nagkaroon siya ng angular unconformity. Eventually, the layer started to tilt. And then non-conformity between 2, 3, and start, so then there starts the deposition of 3 and eventually the deposition of layer four. So here's another exercise for you. Oh, still uh, determine the order of the, the events that shape the strata. Take note that D is a hard igneous rock. Ah, in flash, I your answer, sorry. So take, a so take the time first to try to solve it on your own. And then the answers are actually found in the next slide. So first, Muna is letter E. So nagkaroon muna ng earthquake. Eventually, oh, rather, sorry. The first event is actually C. The first event is C, followed by the cross cutting of D. Rather, okay, at this point, medyo sabaw na ako. The first event is C, followed by the formation of B, followed by the deposition of A, and then the cross cutting of D, and then finally the faulting done by E as E actually cuts across all the four other layers. I am so sorry, it's been a long day, and I usually do videos in one take. So, there are actually more stratigraphy examples in the PowerPoint if you would like, but at this point, so I am going to end it here. 
So hopefully, uh, if you have time, you can also go towards the next video, which is on absolute dating and the geologic time scale. And also, don't forget to answer the activities and make sure to practice. Try to answer the practice, work practice worksheets on your own. Para when you take the actual worksheets, you will be ready. Okay? Again, if you have any more questions, just ask away in your email. I'll always be reading them. So with that, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.